Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. While it's difficult for people to self-audit when in government in Nigeria, after all, there are no KPIs, it's expedient oftentimes to retreat and assess genuine feedback. Corruption, our fight, their perception. Recently, a global anti-corruption watchdog, Transparency International, in their latest corruption perception index of 180 countries in the world, rated Nigeria as the fourth most corrupt country in sub-Saharan Africa. This current rating has been a source of concern to government and anti-corruption agencies like EFCC and ICPC, including the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation, who variously condemned the report, claiming that it was oblivious of the achievement of the Buhari administration's great stride in its resolve to tackle corruption, though the organization stood firmly behind its report. Whites, one, can understand the grounds of the EFCC over the report, as they have had to put in a lot in the fight against corruption, including various successful recovery of looted funds, prosecution and conviction of criminal cases, about 819 convictions between January and October 2019, the highest since it was established, despite their refusal to investigate some cases of high-profile politicians who are currently in APC or serving in government. One cannot say the same of their sister agencies like the ICPC and the Nigerian police. It is a notorious fact that the police are demotivated not well remunerated and intentionally starve of funds for reasons based on to government, despite insisting on fighting corruption. One cannot say the same of the ICPC, who, in spite of huge budgetary allocation and a chairman who is a professor of law, has been consistently emerged in one controversy or the other, either disobedience of existing court orders, like the DSS, to intentionally misleading the court, or ambushing respondents in matter they have taken to court, the latest being the Pinnacle Communication Saga to the extent that some people have even called for its merger with the FCC. I think so too, because it's simply a duplication of the job of the police and the FCC. Also, despite the fact that the job could have been handled by the police if well remunerated and properly structured, the creation of another presidential panel on recovery of government assets, whose former chairman, though now a fugitive, recently accused the chairman of ICPC of being behind his travel for fear that he will, use, he will be used to replace the ICPC chair, it's a discussion for another day, all over offices. But the Nigerian government and the Attorney General of the Federation should take cognizance of the fact that Transparency International, as its name implies, does not look at the cases prosecuted in court in rating countries on passive index for corruption and corrupt tendencies. As according to them, these only show how effective prosecutor, the courts and the media are in investigating and exposing corruption. After all, if you are effective, why wait for people to steal, then run after them? Why not make it impossible for them to steal? They would rather look at the perception of Nigerians about the Nigerian immigration services, the custom, the National Assembly, judiciary, ease of doing business without having to grease palm, or to settle to get contracts by passing of our procurement laws and procedures in awarding contracts, getting employment, gaining admission, executive disregard for the extant laws of the land, especially the Freedom of Information Act and disobedience to court order. With all of these indicators, even the government will agree with me that we have not even started the fight against corruption. So if we must improve in our perception rating, we must stop fighting corrupt individuals only and concentrate on cor fighting corruption by putting in place robust institutions that would prevent people from dipping their hands in what my bon, Jimmy Disu would call the cookie jar. Government should know that nepotism and favoritism are the high variant of corruption. Somebody should remind government that in the eyes of these rating agencies, election rigging, vote buying, refusal to render party election account, 
publicly, indiscriminate abuse of public office are the biggest form of corruption. No nation leaves its police the way we have left ours and expect to be taken seriously or rated high in the fight against corruption. Because a compromise case of minor stealing today at the police station is a potential opportunity to embezzle and mismanage and abuse government for tomorrow. Therefore, I would advocate that every public official must submit themselves for public scrutiny and accountability and not the secret one currently being conducted by CCB and DSS. This is to ascertain every source of their wealth and publicly declare them and make it easily accessible through freedom of information request. Also, as custodian of public institutions, they must use same facilities with the rest of us, like hospitals, schools, travel by road, reduce the number of security personnel guiding them, no sirens. That way, they will feel the pain the masses have to contend with daily. And if we all feel the pain, they'll put the right people in there to fix it and appropriate the actual sum meant to fixing it instead of stealing the same. Told them, brother. So, uh, I'll 21 say, years yeah. after Abacha's death, mm. we're still recovering the loot. I'm trying to point at one part of this, what you said, that we must take that anti-corruption war into the preventive mode. Yes. Rather so. than waiting for them to take the money first and tell you start running after mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. 21 mm -hmm. years, yeah. another 300 million dollars is being repatriated mm, again. Mm. It's a loss. And it may not be all. That's there may still be more. That's yeah. small money. No, I mean, I, I, I'm very, I I'm very, people. but you know, when I, when I read his thing, I, I, started, I started saying to myself, okay, Denmark, that's at top of the, for the fifth year running, they're the least corrupt country in the world. What are they doing right? And then when I went to look, they, they, it's not rocket science. They're dealing with free, um, freedom of the press, so they're high in freedom of the press. They're high in freedom of information. Their judicial system is very independent. And then well, I'm trying to think of the other thing that they do that, but the things that they list there are not supremely, you know, any intelligent person. But the other thing is that they also employ um, technology in making sure you take the middleman. So they use uh, chain block technology when they're doing like distributions to the IDP camps. So you don't take out the middleman because I know in other countries, like if you break uh, if you break the speed limit or whatever, the light captures you. You have a you don't, so you don't have anybody to you beg and bribe, you. and they're very tough on bribery. You know, so but we don't have the data. That's where we need to start. So we can take out the middleman, electronic voting. So you're dealing with things that are systemic. And before you know it, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you are governor, or president, you fall in there. The system will capture you. Corruption you know? is not stealing money. Corruption is the entire com is the Government. entire system. Mm. That's what and liberals has already answered that even within his yeah uh, yeah, his, yeah. Uh, whatever. Um, and that's where our problem is. And then add to that the fact that even if you're going after only money stolen by people. Why are you going after people of parties different from yours? The truth is we had how many years of PDP? And so right now we have no government. All they're doing is catching those from PDP. So it appears that for us to catch those from APC, we need a new PDP government. <laughs> Can you imagine? And, and, and that's why you're saying we are running after them after they've stolen. Yes. Right now, APC is stealing. Yes, quote, it's their quote. day. So it's their day. So we need another government after 20 To now chase the ones that we'll run? It's crazy. It's like cat and mouse. It's crazy. And then so, it's, it's foolish of them to even say dismiss, because I even read how e e EFCC just mm. dismissed. You think other countries, and I think I, it was you, Bola, who I heard saying that other countries, when they're trying to assess people for whether they're you know, worthy to do trade with, that they're not going to be looking at what you say, how many no. court, cases you try in court. No, no, no. They're looking at you know, the things that matter to them, you know, whether you're going to be transparent, you're going to show integrity. Right. You know? So these are the bottom lines. Whether you dismiss it or not, it will still It doesn't matter. It will still hold. <laughs> it will be effect. reckoned with. Mm -hmm. After all, like Mohammed apparently was well, seeing um, Reuters. <laughs> What's he doing? Uh, unfortunately, time... Um, run fast when you're having fun. Here on The Advoc Advocate, we are all about transparency and exposing the truth in all our best interests. After the break, Uche likens human trafficking to modern day slavery. Absolutely agree. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, really it, 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 it does. I don't know what we can do 
if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.